This is the Barbecue Central Radio Show, recorded November 29th, 2011. Big Hot Hard Wood. The Barbecue Central Radio Show is being brought to you by The Barbecue Guru, the original creators of automatic temperature control devices, now offering four different models for you to choose from. Rest easy knowing that The Barbecue Guru is controlling your temperature so you can get on with your life. Visit bbqguru.com or call 800-288-GURU for more information. And by Fred's Music and Tasty Licks BBQ Supply, your online barbecue and grilling superstore. From cookers to grills, wood chips and chunks, and everything in between. Also be sure to try the Tasty Licks barbecue brand of rubs and sauces. Check Fred out online at tastylicksbbq.com. And by Stephen DeFranco Jewelers. Located in beautiful Willoughby, Ohio, Stephen DeFranco Jewelers is a family-owned and operated business looking to service the great folks of the barbecue and grilling world. Get free shipping and big discounts by mentioning my name and the term Barbecue Brother. Check out their inventory by visiting stephendefranco.com. And by Butcher Barbecue, with 30 years of experience in retail, wholesale, meat markets, food service, and customer service. Using that experience, everything they do and sell at Butcher's Barbecue comes from real-world knowledge. Check out their award-winning spices, sauces, marinades, and injections by visiting ButcherBBQ.com. Always trust your butcher. And by Draper's Barbecue, a third-generation barbecue company located in western Kentucky between Memphis and Kansas City. Their line of products represents both cities as well as the flavor profiles of Shane's Home. Pick up their smoke and sauce and AP rub today by visiting DrapersBBQ.com. Hi, this is Greg Rempe, host of the Barbecue Central Radio Show. And you are listening to BCRN, all barbecue and grilling all the time. So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike the match, and... Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. Welcome to the Barbecue Central Show, the show where we talk about all things that are important in the world of barbecue. From big-name interviews with competitors on the barbecue circuit, grill manufacturers and pit makers, to advice on cooking brisket and ribs, you'll find it all right here on the Barbecue Central Show. Your host, Greg Rempe, is a backyard barbecue and grilling fanatic and loves to talk about his passion, which many of us share together. You can learn more about barbecue and grilling by visiting the website the bbqcentral.com now let's get in the smoke here's your program host greg rempe hey everybody welcome to another edition of the really big barbecue central show yeah it's a show that talks about all things important to the world of barbecue and grilling centralites how is your life I am doing well. I'm Greg Rempe, by the way, your program host, broadcasting live and direct from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio. Some of you out there questioning why I might call Cleveland the barbecue capital of the North Coast. Don't question me. I'm the host. I know where I'm from, and I know where the barbecue capitals are here in this great city of Cleveland. And it is the barbecue capital of the North Coast, regardless of where you're at in the country, in the world, perhaps. There's only one North Coast, and there's only one barbecue capital, and it's right here in Seatown. Love it. Love the big-time, big-league city of Cleveland, Ohio, and all the barbecue it has to offer. Thanks for joining me here on your Tuesday. If you want to jump in on the show tonight, let me give you some contact information. You can do so at your leisure, 877-448-0433. 877-448-0433 are the toll-free touchstones if you want to jump in tonight. Also, you can email the show at any point if you'd like to. Greg at the BBQ Central Show dot com. Don't forget the very important part of the whole email address. Greg at the BBQ Central Show dot com. Great show lined up for you tonight that I'm going to tell you about right now. Coming up in about 12 minutes from now, we have Derek Riches from about dot com, regular contributor. I believe we missed him last week, but he's doing a lot of traveling. La- uh, not last week, but last month, doing a lot of traveling last month. So nailed him down for. A good segment this coming uh, coming up in about uh, 12 minutes from now. Also, a first-time appearance to the show. 
Venerable food blogger Chris Grove of NibbleMeThis.com will be joining us. Second hour, we have Chad Ward from Whiskey Bent Barbecue lined up to talk about the contest they took place in two weeks ago down at Plant City Pig Jam in Plant City, Florida. And uh, we'll talk a little uh, barbecue radio with Chad as well, time permitting. Also, we have the third. Wait, did we give away two? Two left, yes. So we'll be giving away the third Luft lighter at some point this evening. You have to be listening live in order to answer a very tough trivia question about what's happening live on the show tonight. $80 retail value. Can't beat it for free. Ships to you for free. Kind of a nice interesting way to start your fires i would especially encourage those who have a kettle charcoal grill or especially the ceramic styles the big green eggs perhaps a big steel keg or a bubba keg a kamado a primo or primo whatever you want to call it grill dump work extremely well in those settings so listen live for your chance to win a free luft lighter visit luftusa.com for more information on that particular product We'll have one more to give away next week, and that'll wrap up the month worth of giveaways from the good folks over at the Loof Lighter. Certainly appreciate that. So that's what we have lined up for you tonight. A couple of items of information that I want to pass along to you. First, this coming from a legend on the competition circuit, Mike Davis. Don't know if you all got it in or if you got this email, but I got it, wanted to pass it along. Forget about Cyber Monday. That was yesterday. Laudable Barbecue offering Cyber Monday all week long for the retail customers. That's right. It's Cyber Week at Laudable. Right now through December 3rd, you can place your order and receive 15% off each item. You simply go to laudablebbq.com and select from their award-winning barbecue sauces, the championship red dirt rub, the unbelievable all-purpose seasoning, or the best steak seasoning around Bull Buster. You get 15% off, and all you have to do is type in the code CYBERWEEK, and you'll get that 15% off each item. So rush over there right now, LottableBBQ.com. A lot of deals going on right now. We had the Black Friday. We had Cyber Monday yesterday. We have Cyber Week going on right now with Laudable BBQ. Got a special offer because we have a new sponsor of the show that we're going to be talking about here in roughly five minutes. So a number of things that you may or may not want to take advantage of, but if you're so inclined, LottableBBQ.com is offering 15% off each item. And again, that would include the winning barbecue sauce, the championship red dirt rub, the unbull leavable all-purpose seasoning, or the best, season, uh, best steak seasoning around, the Bull Buster. So go ahead and check that out again. You want to enter in the code CYBERWEEK in the coupon box and then click the update for your order in order for that to actually take effect. So, hey, there you go. You got to love what it's all about when uh, people are looking to help the centralites save some money. I certainly appreciate that. Here we go. We have an email checking in from John Dawson from Patio Daddio Barbecue. Uh, loud and proud on TuneIn Radio. That's right. Gang, if you aren't aware, if you have a smartphone, if you don't subscribe to the newsletter, there's only nine spots available as of 3 o'clock this afternoon. So, uh, A, if you want a heads up on what's going on the show, you want some uh, insider deals, take one of the last nine spots that's available on the newsletter. You can go to Barbecue Central Radio Network's uh, or the Barbie Central Radio Network homepage, click on Newsletter, and you can sign up for one of the last few spots. Sometimes you get some great deals that aren't made available to anybody else, just those insiders for the newsletter. Within the format of a, a lot of those paragraphs, they don't change from week to week because uh, they're just informative items for new people that want to get in. If you have a smartphone, if you have an iOS device, that's an Apple. If you have any Android device, if you have a BlackBerry device or Windows 7, Maybe not Windows 7. However, if you have the three major smartphone carriers, you can go into whatever respective app store that they have and for free download an app called TuneIn Radio. And then go to search and then search BBQ Central. That's probably all you need to put in. And you'll see that the audio stream shows right up and you can stream the show from anywhere you want. You can do it at work. You can do it at the uh, home office. You can do it out in the backyard. More importantly, if you have a uh, headphone jack into your car, like an audio in, auxiliary in, 
You can hardline it right into your car stereo. You're actually going to be listening to the show as you're running down the road right now at 9.07 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you are running down the road, maybe you're a, a FTE or you are an expediter, you're just making a trip to wherever it is that you are driving to, you could be listening to the show live. You could... Of course, I would never encourage calling in while you're listening to the show live because then you would be foregoing the listening part of the whole show. But it's just like regular radio, except we don't have any FCC regulations. We can get crazy if we wanted with the language. We could talk about silly and graphic stuff. We could get completely off topic, and we're not uh, under the regimen of traditional terrestrial radio. And you have it right here. Also, Look at this guy. Look at Dave coming out. You remember last week I broke news from top men in the industry saying that Home Depot, if your Home Depot was carrying or stocking the 18 and a half inch Weber Smoky Mountain, you could get it at a true bargain basement price of $41. Dave Haber in the chat room got another Weber Smoky Mountain from Home Depot on clearance. So what does that make? Two or three, Dave, or something like that? $41, $41, it, it's, it would behoove you to, again, continue to check it out. Not, again, let me reiterate because I got a lot of reaction from people asking me, is this online? Do I need a special code? Who do I need to ask for? Can I call corporate office? I have no idea about any of that. My advice to you is call your local Home Depot. Say you heard it on the most popular barbecue and grilling talk show that has ever existed on the face of the earth. And that somewhere here, some people are getting them for $41 over here. Some people are getting them for $45 or $46 or $56 over here. Just ask. Maybe they're not running that particular deal at their particular place. But it's happening in all different parts of the country. So don't feel that it's just regional or only rele- relegated to some states. That is not the case. And I have to imagine, given the price point and the fact that a week has lapsed since the last time we talked about this, a lot of them have probably gotten snatched up. Again, Dave Haber, $41 in Maryland, so but they were going away like hotcakes. So you had to be on top of it last week. But again, when I'm hearing about deals, when I know that it's, a, it's something that you can't beat, you could get four of them and still pay less than what you would for one normally under any other circumstance. So it made sense to me to at least get it out there. Check out your Home Depot, see if they stock them, and see if they have that uh, price. What do you have to lose except uh, $41? Give me a break. Or again, we're talking about the newest sponsor to the show. It is Fred Gross and Mojo Bricks. Let me ask you a question, Central Lights. What is about 10 inches long, feels like about 3 pounds in your hand, and burns hot for you? If you guessed Mojo Hickory Bricks, then you are right on point. It's the first hickory product by Mojo Bricks for your smoking box. The Mojo Bricks Hickory is not available anywhere else, offered to you exclusively here through the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Beginning right now, take 50, that's 5-0, not 15, 50% off your order when you enter the coupon code BIGHOTHARDWOOD on the shop.mojobricks.com website. Again, that's shop.mojobricks.com. This offer will not last long, so go now. Choose the 8-pack Hickory Hardwood for your shopping cart. That's 8 big, 10-inch Mojo Bricks made, not grown, at a 50% discount on shop.mojobricks.com. This hardwood is unique to the world of wood fuels. It's a dense wood, and it is a green technology that brings it to you made in Appalachia. Where? Yeah, big hot. Made in Appalachia, Mojo Bricks Hickory is made from wood shavings and sawdust generated from one source, an Appalachian cabinet and wood floor manufacturer. All the hickory is collected, processed, without the use of a binder. There are no chemicals, no glues needed to bring you this fine smoking wood. All wood has its own, uh, I almost said orgasmic, organic polymer called, I don't even know what that word's called, linen grows in the cells of the wood and acts as a binder producing hickory in this form takes a lot of work and it will be produced in batches so it's first come first serve for this product mojo bricks produce its first smoking woods this past spring when it introduced cherry maple and the fred oak 
Several of the listeners here have used Mojo Bricks at home in competitions. For the wood smoke, the flavor is great. Success is beyond reproach. And now you can take advantage of this limited time offer when you use the coupon code Big Hot Hard Wood at shop.mojobricks.com website. How can it be used in a Weber Smoky Mountain or any other smoker that relies on charcoal as the fuel? Place a Mojo Brick in the smoking tray and then surround it with charcoal in a stumps or other well-insulated cooker like the Big Ring Egg or Kamado. You will need to reduce its size with like an axe or a saw or something like that. Typical results vary. Experimentation recommended. Again, 50% off at shop.mojobricks.com. We're back with Derek Riches right after this. Stand by. Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. All right, we are back coming up on 14 till the hour again. Mojo Bricks code Big Hot Hard Wood for 50% off. That's 5-0. 50% off your order for the uh, Hickory Big Hot Hard Wood. <laughs> Say that all day long. All right, we'll go race over to the hotline, bring up regular guests of the show and blogger of about.com, Derek Riches. Derek, how are you, buddy? Derek. All right. Barely. Barely. Hold on a second here. There we go. A little better. Uh, volume down on my yeah. uh, my part. So I apologize, Derek. It's been a while no, since we've been like together. That. So, you know, I, I have to uh, get my bearings straight and get everything together. <laughs> Derek, uh, we missed you last month. You were busy traveling. Uh, let us into the life of somebody who has one of the best jobs out there, getting to mess around with all these cool barbecue and grilling things. Uh, what have you been up to since our last visit? Oh, boy. Uh, where do you start, right? Yeah, where do I start? Well, let's see. I was down in Vegas for the Pool and Patio Expo. How, so um, Now, how did that go? I mean, what did you see? What did you like? A lot of, a lot of the similar exhibitors that you get year after year. What, how, how do you rate that as an overall experience for yourself? Yeah, it's, it's, not a, it's not a big deal because not very many people, you know, in you know, on the barbecue end actually attend that. It's a whole lot of hot tub. But um, I went down because, uh, you know, what we're going to be talking about later, the Sabre grills were being introduced there, and I wanted to see uh, – See that right up first when they first hit the market. All right, and then what else are you? Uh, what else are you up to, Derek? Uh, well, uh, I've been up in Canada talking to a few people up there, doing some work there, and then um, I was out in New York for a bit. So, uh, just kind of running around, meeting people, talking to people. All right. So we have uh, like three different things we're going to be talking about tonight. Uh, before we get into that, uh, typically I, I would ask to fill uh, at the end of a segment if we have a few leftover minutes. But I wanted to ask you about a product. I don't know if you've seen it, if you've had a chance to mess around with it. I saw it reviewed on, uh, I think it's called Barbecue Sauce Reviews website, uh, Jay Prince. And it was a product. It's another pellet grill that I just uh, is kind of hitting the market. <clears throat> Oddly enough, Derek, not located in the Pacific Northwest with everybody else. It's a, I believe it's called Fahrenheit Technologies, the company that makes it, but the grill is called a Gorilla Grill. Is it something that oh. you've seen, anything you've heard about it, feedback? Uh, I've been in contact with the company to try and get them on to do an interview just to talk a little bit about it, but didn't know if you've been able to see it yourself. Gorilla Grill, yeah, I did see these. Um, trying to think of where I saw them. Uh, yeah, I, I haven't had a chance to really dig into it too much because... Uh, they seem to be kind of coming out, and I haven't had a chance to talk to them. Well, I 
do think I might have an email from him somewhere. All right. Well, but yeah, no, I don't know too much about him. Yeah, uh, something I'm uh, trying to find out more about, though. All right, so uh, maybe that'll be for next month after you do a little bit of digging. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, right off the top, hit that Saber Grills that you were talking about, uh, the one that you want to go see in person. Again, Saber Grills, S A B E R, sabergrills.com is the website in case. People that are listening right now want to go ahead and check that out while you're talking about it. Uh, what can you tell us about the company and, in specific, the products? Well, the company is Charbro. Who are they? Yeah, I know. Who are they? Um, you know, this is the Charbro <laughs> uh, has a reputation for kind of you know rushing things to market, not spending enough time thing, testing things out, not spending enough time in development. Well, about two and a half years ago or so, they. Uh, took their product manager, Rob Schwing, and sent him off uh, on his own to basically reinvent a gas grill without any influence or any input from Charbro. And uh, this is what they've come up with. So it's, 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 uh, it's owned by Charbro, but it's is it kind of, in essence, a uh, – who was it? Was it Weber that had a Lynx or like a, a higher-end model like Toyota has Lexus and Honda has Infiniti and so on? Yeah, uh, the, yeah, that was the Velux, yeah, six thousand dollar right. gas. Right. Yeah, that lasted about a year. <laughs> um, kind of a tough market space to compete in, I yeah, think. Of course. Yeah, it's of course. kind of like that. So basically, what it is, and you know, and this is what they they tell me is that the Turbo will have nothing to do with this grill as far as it, its production, uh, support, or uh, design, but. What Sabre gets is Charbroil's discount shipping, freight, you know, all of that sort of, you know, the power of a big company, but the big company doesn't get to tell them how to run the business. Hmm. So what do you think of the, uh, you know, is it multiple product lines that they're putting out? Is it only gas grill, only one, like not a lot of choice? What do you, what are you seeing? Uh, it's all gas grills. It's all infrared. There are seven models. They range from about $500 to $1,700. Wow. Uh, it uses something similar to Charbroil's quantum infrared technology, but they've actually fixed it. Um, well, let me let me stop did- you for a second, uh, Derek, because when I when I originally got into grilling, other than you know something that I would do maybe once when I really started getting into the whole barbecue and grilling thing, I looked into infrared technology for grills because at that point I was more of a griller than a barbecuer. And the one that I really wanted to get was a company called Tech, T-E-C, known uh, throughout probably the, at least the country, probably throughout the world for the infrared technology. When I see infrared at Charbroil, it didn't look like the same thing. It weren't those white uh, square pucks that have all of this glowing uh, infrared heat. It, it's a little bit different. So you're looking at the same thing for Sabre Grills as far as what the Charbroil original design was like in the setup? Yeah, it's similar to that. In actuality, what happened is uh, Tech is uh, run by a guy by the name of Bill Best, and he basically invented almost all the infrared technology we have. Um, he licensed that technology to Charbro. They have a co-development um, relationship. And so uh, when you look at Charbro's infrared, it's Bill Best's technology. He designed it, but they implemented it, and that's kind of where the problems came up with. What they've done with Sabre is they've kind of fixed those issues. Um, what's impressive about this is if it's stainless steel, it's all 304 stainless steel. Um, it's all extremely high quality materials. Uh, it works really quite well. I watched um, the executive chef of Strip Steak in Vegas cook butter soaked ribeye steaks on this for two solid hours, covering the whole grill surface the entire time. There was not a single flare-up at any one time. So how do you maintain uh, the infrared grill after you cook on it? Well, I mean, what, what kind of a maintenance regimen would you be looking at or having to do as a purchaser of this item? Well, with this one, it comes with a special little fork-like uh, scraper that fits down between the cooking grates. So when you're done, you take that out and you just kind of pass it over the cooking grates and you're done. That's it. And what about anything? Is anything dripping down into the catch, just vaporizing? Is there never going to be any type of buildup or where you're going to have to get raise the grates off and go to the inner workings of the grill in order to maintain it? Yeah, well, you, you know, you might after, you know, like an annual thing. But um, like I said, that guy cooked steaks for two hours on it and the drip pan was clean. 
Hmm. So a, nothing but, got through. But like a, a different uh, a different burner style than what you would see on a tech grill. Well, yeah, the current tech design uses a um, ceramic uh, glass, tempered yeah. glass material. Right. Uh, this doesn't use that. Uh, Charbroil tried to do that. They tried to use that same tech technology when they first came out with the Charbroil tech grill, and um, the burner blew, blew itself apart. It popped all the screws out because it, the, the heat was too intense, and they weren't using the kind of materials necessary to kind of contain it. Mm-hmm. So it literally tore itself apart. Charbroil got into having to replace all the burners. The replacement burners were no good. Uh, basically, everyone hated them for it. <laughs> And again, going back to Charbroil's rush to get something good out and just not uh, planning into the future or, or putting the quality materials, I guess, into the products to make them successful. Uh, so, I mean, what's your gut tell you about Saber Grills? Are they technically introduced to the market yet? Or are they waiting for a official launch? Uh, they they officially launched a little, well, almost a month and a half, almost two months ago, I guess. Uh, this is only going to be available in specialty retailers. There's no mass market for this. You're going to have to find a local dealer if you want to get one because it's the only way they're going to distribute it. Right. Uh, they don't want the Home Depot or Lowe's having anything to do with it. 500 to 1700 So what are we looking at in space as we go up in price point? And are there other like uh, side burners or extra decks or rotisseries or anything like that that's coming along with it? Uh yeah, there. Well, th- you've got uh, two burner, three burner, and four burner units. You've got two built-in units, a three burner and a four burner on that. Um, and then the upper units do have um, side burners. Um, the the top of the line, the seventeen hundred. Um, actually, there's a fifteen hundred or seventeen hundred. They actually have a uh, dual side burner. It's a dual burner side burner uh, that will actually boil uh, a large about eight ten gallons of water in about 15 20 minutes so dual burn like one inside of the other not left and right yeah yeah so you have kind of yeah it's one right two ring burners one inside the other so you kind of have more variation on the amount of heat you want to put out so it has a very high heat uh, put out but you can also you know put a small saute pan on there as well all right so no being now that we know it's being owned by charbroil you've seen it uh, you sound pretty positive, and what's your gut telling you about the potential success of these grills versus the parent company's efforts? You know, I think that, in all honesty, this may be one of the best gas grills on the market right now. Wow. So well worth the, uh, it, uh, the $500 price point to start. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's comparable in price to Weber Genesis, to Napoleon Prestige, Royal King line. Uh, it's right in that range. Um, it's really going to kind of depend on how many dealers are going to be out there to pick it up. As of right now, I don't think very many people are selling it, but, you know, it's not the prime time of the year. You know, I wonder, Derek, you, you might not have any insight uh, on this at all, or maybe you asked and they didn't have any reason to want to tell you. But when a dealer picks up a Saber Grill product line and they house, let's say, three, four of each unit, just for argument's sake, What's the what's the margin between what the dealer is buying it from Saber Grills or Charboil, and then how much are they marking it up to the end user? Do you have a guess or do you know? Um, yeah, on Saber's pretty standard for the industry at about at about thirty percent, thirty thirty five percent in that range. So it's a thirty five percent margin for what the dealer is going to buy it to what they're going to turn around and sell it to you at. Yeah, what you're buying it for about about a third of what you're buying a grill for is is going to the dealer. Hmm. Okay, so I mean, is that uh, a decent product margin? Would people? I mean, obviously everybody likes to see more, but uh, what, would it be? Do they have the option of reducing uh, the amount of money they're putting in their pocket to move more units and sell it through volume? Yeah, you know, I don't. You know, it, it's possible. I don't think that at this point, um, Saber's really making any deals right now. But we'll have to see how that goes, and it's going to see how how well it distributes to ultimately determine that. The that that profit margin is really pretty much the industry standard, you know. I, I mean, that's the thing about it. if you buy something, about twenty percent of what you spend is is the actual product. Everything else is markup from someone else. Derek Riches from About dot com, uh, specifically BBQ dot About dot com, joining us here on the show. Next product that we have, Derek, is the Charbroil, the Big Easy Two in One Electric Smoker and Roaster. Uh, is this a bigger bro- or a revision of the Big Easy of the Big Easy original from a couple years ago? Uh, yeah, yeah. And this is this is Turbo's kind of uh, attempting to improve the quality of the products, but 
Um, they came out about two years ago with the Smoker Roaster Grill, which was a larger propane version version of the original Big Easy. Right. Um, you could actually put a cooking grate on the top of it, and you could actually grill on it. It wasn't terribly effective with that. Now they've come out with an electric version of it. It has a little meat probe that you can put inside, and it's got, I think, um, 15 preset temperature selections, ranging temperature from about 100 and I think, what was it? Um, I think it's about 150 to 525 degrees is what it'll generate. Um, and, you know, this is something that kind of evolved out of their attempt to make a, a turkey roaster, a turkey fryer, an oilless turkey fryer. That was the original idea. Have you and, had occasion to actually use this particular product? Yeah. Yeah, I have. Um, still got it sitting on the back porch, actually. Uh, I fired it up a few times, and um, it's not bad. I mean, if you're doing like a turkey or a couple of chickens, it's easy to deal with. You have to get kind of creative if you want to do uh, maybe a rack of ribs or something like that. It, it does large roasts relatively well, um, but it does kind of require the end user to, to jury rig a few solutions if you want to get some actual versatility out of it. What kind of a price point are we looking at to get in one of these? Well, that's, you know, that's kind of my argument with this. When the original Big Easy came out, um, I think it was about 150 They dropped it down to $100. Mm-hmm. And at $100 for fairly basic, well, well, infrared metal cooking bucket, which is what I describe it as, that wasn't a bad thing. This one is $250. And oh. in my mind, yeah, in my mind, that is just way too much money for – Something that you probably aren't going to use all that much. I mean, yeah, there you go over to the Charbroil website and their forums and stuff, and there are crazy people who cook all sorts of stuff in there. But you know, for most of us, it's just not the sort of thing that that we would fire up every weekend. Uh, do you, you know? have Do you have an increased capacity? Can you fit like a twenty eight pound turkey in there or something? No, not really. No, I mean it's still gonna get you in. The, I think it's about. 16, 17 pound turkey is really kind of its capacity. Mm -hmm. Um, Because it's infrared, you've got to have this distant, you know, I mean, it's a bucket. Come on. And (laughs) there has to be a space between the sides of the bucket and where the food is. And so to to accommodate, you know, a really big turkey, like 25 pound turkey, it would have to be huge. I mean, just be gigantic. And, And so they just can't make it kind of big enough. And it does kind of have some of the charbroil issues. You put the handles on on the side of it, and they don't line up with the screws quite right, and <laughs> it's kind of clunky. It's, parts don't quite fit together. But, you know, I mean, it's all sourced out of China, and they send the specs over and hope that it all comes out okay. So uh, worth a pass or worth a try? Uh, you know, I would – you know, I wouldn't get the electric. I would get the propane version of this, which is like $50 cheaper. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if you really want this sort of thing, uh, not bad for tailgating, that sort of thing, uh, as an electric, it's certainly no good for tailgating. Um, but no, I'm not that, I'm not that big on it. It's not that bad, but I just don't necessarily see the reason for it. Derek Rich is joining us here on the show. Derek, just a couple minutes left here. I'm going to hold the great room company cook number 36 inch stainless drill, uh, grill off to the side, uh, for the rest of the segment. Uh, because we're getting into the holiday season, just in case I don't get you again uh, next month, uh, I mean, you know, we're only, uh, December's only two days away. Some ideas as somebody who is around a lot of accessories, a lot of grills, somebody might be listening to the show that is, uh, has a, a significant other that is a grill lover, a barbecue lover. What are some of like your top two or three or five gifts uh, that you think would be worth recommending to someone during these holiday seasons? Um, well, I'll just throw me out there. Okay. Um, you know, there's a number of things out there. My argument with accessories, you know, you go to the store and you see all these big packs of tools and all this sort of stuff. Most of it's crap. I mean, it's way overpriced. It's like you wouldn't spend that much money if you were, were buying it for your kitchen, but because it's for your grill, it's really expensive. So, you know, I tell people don't just you know, buy something specific. Um, I think we talked about this before. There was uh, that little pizza, kettle pizza right, cooker. Right. 
Yeah, um, if if you know somebody's got, I've had a lot of fun with that actually. Um, you know, I've been doing up like a big batches of calzones and all sorts of stuff. And it's it's been a lot of fun to play with. Um, that's kind of you know something fun as an accessory item. Um, you know, I tell people look for something that's going to add functionality to what you already have. So you know, if you've got a Weber kettle, there's a number of kind of actually not Weber products that can really accessorize that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I also, you know, I tell people, hey, you know, throw in the rotisserie kit because I think that's always a great accessory to have. Anything else that you would always uh, potentially recommend as a gift of something kind of crazy as a, as, a, as a weird out there accessory for the grill and barbecue market? Well, I tell you, stay away from weird because you'll never use it. Pizza stones are great. Um, you know, things in that neighborhood, you know. Look for something that's going to give you some functionality and take you in a direction you want to actually go in. Derek Riches uh, writes for bbq.about.com. He is our expert product reviewer, letting you know where you should be putting those discretionary dollars if you have them available. Derek, always appreciate the time, and hopefully we can get you again next month. All right, great. Good talk to you. All right, take care. There he is. Derek, finally chasing him down. Check out the uh, Sabre Grills. We spent a lot of time on that. I was very interested because uh, Charbroil has decided to make another attempt at grills, and uh, they're going to do it on their own. Sabre Grills uh, operating independently, so very excited to uh, potentially see one at one of my dealers, but that might be an issue too, according to Derek. Gang, want to talk to you about the Barbecue Guru. Look, every week I'm telling you about if you're a busy professional like perhaps me, you're leaving in the morning, you want to have some dinner waiting for you when you get home, but you want barbecue, you want ribs, you want brisket, you want pork, but Barbecue Guru, the original creators, look, there's some other people out there that have automatic pit temperature control devices as well, but if you have the ability to buy from somebody that has basically invented not only automatic pit temperature control devices, but this was the business before the Barbecue Guru even came to existence, dealing it on the industrial side with Thermo Megatech, using that microprocessors and the mini fans and all that stuff. Look, you can just set these devices at the temperature you want, and then that's exactly what's going to happen. You go ahead and do whatever it is that you need to do in life while the Barbecue Guru maintains your automatic or it maintains your pit temperature at exactly where you set it. It doesn't get any better than that. Also, you have four different models to choose from. Maybe you just want something that is going to mine the temperature of the pit alone. Maybe you want to have some interaction with your computer and your barbecue guru. Maybe you want to have the ability to roam free around your neighborhood up to 600 feet away, whatever the case may be. The barbecue guru has your Procom 4 wireless. It has the CyberQ2 unit. It has the DigiQ DX unit. And the newest product that was announced about three or four weeks ago is this Party Q. It's $129 for the standard bullet style smokers, $139 for the ceramic style cookers because you need a special uh, flange in order to hold the fan on there. It's an all inclusive unit. One piece running on AA batteries. You get 35, 40 hours of burn time out of a set of batteries. So good for at least a couple cooks of, uh, of overnight cooks for butts and uh, briskets. And it's all just in one piece. You get a digital readout. You can set your temperatures. Relax. Don't worry about, do I need to add another log? Do I need to make a vent adjustment? It takes all the guesswork away. It's not cheating. And for $129, you can buy one for yourself. If you have a friend or a neighbor that's getting into barbecue, you can buy one for them for Christmas, and it's not breaking the bank. It doesn't get any better than that. And you can check them out two different places. You can call them toll-free, 800-288-GURU. That's 800-288-GURU. Or visit them online, thebbqguru.com. First timer, Chris Grove from Nibble Me This. Coming back. Stand by. Smoke. Call 877-448-0433 to get on the air. Now, here's your host, Greg Rampey. Big B, new sound band, suburban voice record. Let's go! I'm an outlaw. 
give me two shots. We don't need a radio, bring a jukebox. For my outlaws, bring me three shots. We can raise hell before the speed stops. I'm a whiskey drinking SOB. If you don't like that, then you won't like me. I'm an outlaw. All right, we are back, and we're all outlaws up in this biatch. 877-448-0433. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. In case you want to get in touch with the show, thanks again to Derek Riches from BBQ.about.com. Check it out. But we race over the hotline, bringing first timer into the show, food blogger Chris Grove from nibblethis.com. Chris, how are you, buddy? Doing good. How about you tonight, Greg? I'm doing absolutely fabulous, Chris. Thanks for taking the time out to join me. And uh, I appreciate you. Uh, you know, first time we're into the show, got to be very intimidating for uh, most people. But you are a professional food blogger out there. You know what time it is. And, you know, it's kind of interesting. You're really kind of one of the first uh, grilling food blogger guys that I've kind of brought into the mix uh, a little late into the live show game. So for the and quite frankly, Chris, and I know you would never say this in person, but you are a uh, chat room celebrity when it comes to the show, always giving out information. You're, I think, 95 percent of the time in the the show when it's happening live. So I certainly appreciate that. But for the folks that maybe don't know the story behind Chris Grove and what Nibble Me This is all about, how is it something that you even get into? Where does the passion and the drive come from? Uh, actually, it really started off as a goof, to be honest with you. I didn't really think it was going to go anywhere. It was just something that I thought would be fun to do. And, uh, you know, one day I started to get a comment here from somebody and a comment from somebody else. And I realized, oh, crap, people are actually reading this stuff. And, uh, you know, decided I'd try to make it better. So that's basically how it started. It was really all you know, on, on a lark. So when you start getting reaction and you realize you're going to have to start interacting with people and becoming a blogger in, uh, you know, for the real sense of the term, I mean, what's your background? Are you somebody that grew up around grilling and barbecue? Uh, Is it something you just kind of threw up there and all of a sudden you're forced to become an expert on the fly? How does that all work out? No, it really, you know, my uh, background really started with barbecue was when I was uh, probably in 04 or 03, I decided to try to make uh, barbecue like I'd had in North Carolina as a kid. And I just hadn't been able to find the same thing here or anywhere. And I, you know, went out and bought me a a Brinkman uh, offset smoker and tried to figure it out myself. And after banging my head on the, uh, you know, that process and learning a lot from the people in the forums, I thought I would just, you know, try to incorporate it in there too. So the longer you've done nibbledmethis.com, uh, the more recipes you've put out there, obviously you're garnering more and more track, uh, traffic each and every day to the site. Any kind of doors that it has opened up for you that you didn't even expect would happen as you keep it rolling? Oh, definitely. Um, probably the biggest thing is like information and access from different companies and vendors and things like that. Because, I mean, if I called them just say, hey, my name's Chris Grove, they're not going to call back. But you know, when you have a website and uh, now a lot of them come to me, you know, Food Network will send a thing saying, hey, we're looking for, you know, a food entrepreneur who has just left their job and trying something new. Um, things like that that I've never would have thought would just fall right in my lap. Um, you know, you get invitations to events. This year I got to go with uh, uh, Robin and uh, from GrillGirl.com and uh, uh, John Dawson from Patio Daddio over to uh, Kingsford University. I guarantee you Kingsford is not just going to call me out of the blue and say, hey, do you want to come over here? (laughs) So things like that, it's really I never expected. Chris Grove joining us here on the show. NibbleMeThis.com is his website. Go ahead and check it out if you haven't already. Um, When you're put in that position or when you're approached with uh, somebody asking you to evaluate a product or we want to give you this product or we want to take you over to Kingsford, is there any type of – professional decorum or rules that you have to follow like disclosures or anything like that to make sure that you are on the unbiased and and level playing field? Yeah. um, In uh, 2009, FTC decided they were going to start really enforcing uh, what they call user endorsements because you had companies out there that would stick some flunky intern in a cubicle somewhere and said, here, write a blog about our company. Um, so now you have to, if basically the rule is if you get any kind of compensation, it doesn't just have to be cash. It could be, um, trips like the Kingsford university thing, um, free product, whatever. Could it be uh, tie hookers? Uh, where would you get such a thing? Yeah. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> uh, 
actually when that when they did the video for that and it first came out there then they had the ftc video i linked it on my site and uh, had to do a smart aleck disclosure and said i didn't get any sexual favors for this uh, post um, <laughs> i thought it would be funny but yeah uh, you have to be upfront about it and state it in the post either you know up front hey kingsford sent me to this or put a disclaimer at the bottom that says hey i got free product you can't just say hey this is great stuff and and not uh uh, you know, explain why you know, that you got it for free. So, what's the difference between food bloggers and like what competition cooks do? Have you uh, gotten into competition at all? Do you ever have any type of uh, inkling or or want to get on the competition cooking scene? You know, I've, I've been to a lot of them, talked to a lot of them. It's way too hard for me to be honest with you. That is some hard stuff that they do. Um, you know, there's some similarities as far as, you know, we both take food seriously. We both have to try to appeal to an audience. Um, and with both of them, really, any fool can do either, but it takes a good skill set to do either well. Um, the biggest difference, I think, is freedom. You know, comp cooks have a lot of rules to follow depending what sanctioning body you're, you know, competing with today. Uh, you have set foods you have to cook, whereas, you know, we pretty much have bloggers have free reign. You know, we can do you know, what other methods, preparations, ingredients, whatever. Chris. Then there's there's also like schedule. That's a big another big thing is, you know, there's no clock running on me. And I guess the biggest thing is I get to do do overs. If I screw up, I'm just not going to post it and I'll post, you know, do it the next day and repost it. <laughs> Chris Grove joining us here on the show. com is the website. Uh, Chris, one thing I want to ask you about, and you, you kind of gave me some talking points as far as the segment is concerned. There's this uh, new cut of beef promoted by uh, the beef it's what's for dinner people, the boneless uh, top sirloin petite roast and the top sirloin filet. Uh, what can you, what can, what can you, what can't you tell me about these? Um, well, actually, I got to speak to uh, their, the registered dietitian for them today so to get a little bit more information because they're actually piloting it right now across the country in several different markets. I did not realize it was a pilot thing, um, but you could get it at any butcher if they know their uh, meat. You can just tell them you need a – it's the NAP, NAMP number 184 cap off. Um, but what it is, it's a, it's a smaller roast, and it's the uh, first beef that's gotten the American Heart Association's extra lean des- designation – and when I first heard that, I thought, okay, tasteless and dry. But, uh, you know, it really can't be further from the truth. I did it on the Big Green Egg at uh, 350 indirect for uh, till it got right up to about 130 and then uh, gave it a quick sear. And if you had sliced that for me and served it to me and told me it was uh, beef tenderloin, I would have believed you. Hmm. Um, it's just got that same texture, you know, that buttery, smooth texture, and uh, actually has a little bit more beef taste than a tenderloin. But... Um, and you know the thing I like about it, it's cheaper. You don't have to trim the chain of bull and the silver skin off. It comes already ready. And this is something that is widely available or is just starting to roll out now? Well, uh, from what uh, Cheryl Hendricks told me today, she was in the middle of a conference but uh, took the time to give me a call and we spoke for a few minutes. She said it was actually we were one of the test markets. But if you, uh, you know, butchers have a, a standard, the National Association meat processor, they have a number for different cuts. So that was the cut number I gave, the NAMP 184 cap off. So basically any butcher, you told him that's what you wanted, he should be able to cut it. All right. Now, uh, food bloggers known, obviously, for great recipes. Uh, I've asked John Dawson this question. It was probably three or four months ago. Actually, I, now that I'm thinking about it, it's probably almost a year ago that I'm actually thinking back to the conversation that I had. I said, you know, John, when I'm going down the aisles in the grocery store, I see products I can't say that I've ever been inspired by seeing like one product and all of a sudden my mind starts going, well, if I go here and I go here and I can do this and I can do that, that like happens to him all the time. I see it happen with Robin uh, and I've seen after perusing your website, it obviously is happening with you. What, what inspires you when you go into the grocery store? Are you starting out with some type of game plan or outline or all of a sudden is the mood going to strike you as you're in, uh, you know, whether it be a specialty store or just a regular grocery store that you see a product and all of a sudden you can start feeling a new recipe getting generated within the, the nibble me this brand? Actually, honestly, one of the biggest inspirations is trying not to go to the store. Uh, <laughs> I'll do the refrigerator stare and sit there and try to figure out, okay, I got this leftover, I got this coming up that I need to use, and just try to figure out what I can use to avoid that trip. But, uh, um, you know, really, if, if it's something that I'm doing for a project for somebody, I basically sit down with a whiteboard ahead of time and just start thinking, okay, what, what I'm thinking of 
like for example, bush beans, honey baked uh, beans. You know, I start thinking what the flavors are in them and and try to match them. Uh, John Dawson actually gave me a, a great book, The Flavor Bible, and uh, that's great for trying to match things with certain ingredients. So I use that a lot. So I segue into the recipe question, knowing that I'm easily going to be able to ask you about this pig candy cheeseburger that you did recently. Tell us about that <laughs> and, and like what the recipe would be in case people want to try it. Well, it, it's. Uh, I got the recipe up on my site, but basically what it is is um, it was one of the projects I was working on with uh, Bush Beans, actually, and uh, you know, it was supposed to be a tailgate. And unfortunately, at the last minute, we weren't going to be able to bring our grills onto the tailgate site. So we tried to, I, what I wanted to do is try to make something that was portable. So I'd already made the pig candy, which awesome on a hamburger. I don't know why I never thought of that before. That's, I mean, that right there makes it worth doing. But just did um, a beef patty. Uh, the pig candy and other beef patty, and then instead of bringing a whole bunch of ingredients, I put a whole bunch of ingredients into a cheese sauce and just pour that right over the burger on site, you know, put it in a thermos so it stays warm, and you pour that over your uh, already cooked burgers when you get there. So it's just a nice way to be able to transport it down to the uh, tailgate if you can't cook on site. Are you a burger snob? Do you like to make your own? Do you prefer this kind of meat over that kind of meat? How do you make them? Um, not really a snob. I like, um, uh, 80, 20 blend. Um, if I can, I'd uh, rather do it myself and use uh, just ground chuck. Um, I like doing, uh, fatter burgers like, uh, five and, uh, five and a third ounce burgers. So it's about a third pound. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it. Would you ever eat a Bubba burger? <laughs> My brother-in-law actually works for them. No. <laughs> no! <laughs> it's, uh, the only reason I've had them, I mean, in a pinch I'll eat them, of course. It's burger's a burger. Uh, if you can't make your own, that is. I'm always a little leery when the directions say that uh, you don't want to let it thaw because the meat might just fall apart. Something weird is going on there, right? <laughs> exactly. That's the yak meat in there. Yeah, that, That's kind of weird. Now, for the upcoming holiday parties, any appetizer ideas that you can shell out for the central lights here? Yeah, one that I liked and pretty much uh, anybody could follow was uh, we made something called mini chimichangas, which uh, was real simple. It started with having some leftover pulled pork and some wonton skins because I think everybody's got frozen pulled pork stuffed away in their freezer. Um, just you know, you take some uh, pulled pork and mix it with whatever else you want, cheese, uh, onions, chili peppers, you know, whatever floats your boat and just kind of get them a, a good mix together. And just take about two teaspoons on one end of a wonton skin, roll it up and pinch the ends and uh, deep fry it. And mm. those things disappeared so quick because you got all that good pulled pork inside. They're crispy, uh, warm, and you can make a you know, whole big batch of them and, and uh, put them like in a platter and they'll just disappear. Wow, oh, man, that sounds absolutely fabulous. And uh, for the people that are wondering, the recipe is up there on the website as well. Uh, before we let you go here, Chris, uh, I saw this uh, story about you and a new neighbor. Uh, it seemed very uh, kind of uh, apropos and funny. Maybe we could close on that. Uh, tell us a little bit about your new neighbor. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> with my deck, my deck is right below the window of the next door neighbor's dining room. And we had a new neighbor moving in. So I was worried, are they going to complain about my three grills being out there all year round? Right. And, uh, the night the guy was moving in, it was dark out there. And he said, uh, I went out there to introduce myself, but before I could, he said, I'm jealous. I see you got two big green eggs. And I said, oh, this is going to go good. And we started, even before exchanging names, we started talking about um, uh, eggs and <laughs> grilling and smoking. And uh, I mentioned uh, doing Chris Lilly's uh, brisket method. And when I said Chris, he said, oh, is that Chris from Nibble Me This? And I said, <laughs> uh, that's me. <laughs> no, so I, just, that, I'm right here. Yeah, so I don't think I'm going to have any problem with my new neighbors. That's cool. Yeah, he's probably thinking that he moved right in next to a web celebrity. So there you go. Uh, we're talking with Chris Grove from nibblemethis.com. Be sure to check out the website, Chris. I uh, really appreciate you coming on tonight. Hopefully we can do this regularly. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, take care. There he is. It's Chris. <laughs> nibblemethis.com is the website in case you want to uh, check that out again what i really like about the food bloggers that i have on here is that a they're they're posting regularly in order to be very successful in the food blog thing you got to have inspiration you got to have passion and more importantly content 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 got to be updating that blog you got to get some fresh ideas out there and 
you know, the majority of the time, you probably want them to taste good as well. And I think Chris falls very well into that category, so I certainly appreciate him making time for the show tonight. All right, we're going to uh, come back and wrap up the first hour. We're going to be also giving away that loof lighter here in about uh, three minutes. Before we do that, though, want to remind you about the person who seems to generate the most talk because he sponsors the show. It's Stephen DeFranco of Stephen DeFranco Jewelers. Always people are, are emailing me, especially the podcasters, asking me why a guy who's selling jewelry is sponsoring the show. Well, first of all, Steve is a barbecue guy. He owns a, uh, uh, what is it, the, uh, the good one smoker. He loves cooking ribs and pork butts and briskets and all that great stuff. He sought me out. I got an email from him one day, and he just signed it, Steve and Willoughby. I was like, oh, finally, somebody else, at least within my driving distance, that we can meet, we can talk about barbecue. Lo and behold, he's one of the premier independently owned retailers in one of the biggest east side suburbs here in Cleveland, Ohio, in downtown Willoughby. That's Stephen DeFranco. Why am I telling you this? Because we all want somebody that we know in the industry of jewelry. We don't want to pay full retail price. We always want to get a deal, and that's what Steven is going to be able to provide for you. So here's what you have to do. Go to the Barbecue Central Radio Network homepage and then click on Steven DeFranco's banner. Peruse the inventory. If you mention my name, if you mention the term Barbecue Brother, you're going to get a huge discount off of whatever it is that you're looking at. Maybe you're looking at a watch like an Accutron, like I usually wear, a Bolova, a Citizen's watch. You have Philip and Company, which is a cottage watchmaker. You have Christmas layaway available at no charge. If you live in Ohio, you have six months, same as cash financing, available through Springleaf Financial. He's also offering $100 off his $895 Blue Bud watch. Look, I know it's the time for giving. Give something to yourself. I'll be the only one that's going to sit here and tell you all holiday season that I appreciate the Central Lights so much that I encourage you one time just to get something. Treat yourself right. Get you you some something. And you can do it at a huge discount from Stephen DeFranco. Barbecue Central Radio Network's homepage. Click on the Stephen DeFranco banner. Peruse the inventory. And then call in and talk to Steve directly ask for steve he will take your call he'll hook you up free shipping engraving batteries for the watches service plans all that good stuff he's going to take care of you i trust him 100 percent encourage you to do business with him i have bought a number of things from steve already in our short relationship satisfied each and every time it's customer service and it's quality products at great pricing steven defranco.com we'll come back to give away a loof lighter right after this stick around we'll be right back Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue. It's the Barbecue Central Show. All right, just uh, coming up here to the top of the hour, about five minutes left. 877-448-0433. Greg at the BBQCentralShow.com. If you want to jump in and win that Luft lighter, 877 448 Four eight zero four three three. Chad with the best line in the first hour. Trust your jeweler. We know about trusting butchers because we only trust one butcher when it comes to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. We trust that butcher enough to where the point I'm actually doing shots of barbecue sauce. I'm gonna talk about that during his read too. Uh, the bottle that opened last week. Guess what? Gone. Gonzo. Trust your jeweler. Trust your butcher. Trust Fred Bernardo. Trust the barbecue. Group, trust all these people. Trust Dave Bosca the most, though. We like Dave the best. Uh, 877-448-0433. Greg at the BBQ Central Show dot com is the email address. If you're interested in winning that Luft lighter, all you have to do is give me a call, and we will go ahead and put you up. We'll ask you a very brief trivia question about one of the first two guests, and uh, pretty much that'll be it. It's very easy. It's a $70, $80 type of a prize that you can win. And it ships to you for free, absolutely free. So it doesn't get any better than that. I say that a lot now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, 
833-288-0833. Thanks to Chris Grove for joining me on the show. And uh, again, when when you're looking, oh, 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 oh. somebody got a, I got a call coming in here. Oh, I missed it. Oh darn it. I'm messing around with the iPad, trying to change things. That's my fault right there. Call back in. I swear to God, I'll take your call. I'm not even lying like I know I want to. Uh, when it's when it comes to food bloggers, you want to make sure that you're dealing with people that uh, really know what they're talking about. And certainly, Chris Grove is a uh, trusted source in, in that concern. All right, let's go ahead and race over to the hotline. Uh, area code 863, name and where you're calling from. Hey, Chad Ward trying to swipe this loop lighter before I start. <laughs> you are this. a bitch. Hey, you called, so you get it. Uh, so, Chatters, all you need to do is send me your shipping info uh, to greg at the BBQ Central And uh, St. John will send that out to you, courtesy of Loof Lighter, which you can, of course, find out more about that at loofedusa.com. All right, buddy? Excellent, man. Thanks, brother. All right, take care. I'm sure we're never going to talk again, Chad, or we'll talk again in about 10 minutes from now. What do you think about that? Hey, he called. There you code 414. Whoever you were right there, I apologize. I missed your call. <laughs> it looks like I missed your call twice. <laughs> hey, it's luck of the draw, man. I'm busy doing a whole bunch of stuff here at the same time, so uh, forgive me if I uh, mistreated your call. It won't happen again. I apologize. Anyway. Again, thanks to Chris Grove for uh, joining me. And again, uh, check his website out, nibblemethis.com. As someone who is not, let's say, averse to coming up with recipes on his own, looking into the, not even proverbial, but actual refrigerator and seeing stuff left over, when I'm opening the refrigerator, I'm like, ugh, who's going to cook me some food? Not me. I'm going to move in John Dawson. I'm going to move in Chris Grove, and I'm going to move in Robin uh, Lindars, and I'm going to have my own staff of chef here at the Barbecue Central Radio Network studios. Yes! Come home from a hard day of slinging sellies, and I'll have pig candy bacon burgers all over the place. It's going to be fabulous. All right, we're going to step away, and uh, we'll come back. We'll get a little bit uh, outside the smoke segment, and then we'll come back with Chad Ward in the second hour. It's Rempy and you right here on the Barbecue Central Show. Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Fine, how's it going? <laughs> you have a great show. I'm a big fan. So what? What? What seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead, and he's in the in the crackle. Charbono. It's all about the Charbono, dude. Succulent fish, what? He ate 54 wieners. But listen, Laverne, you shake a face. I'm shaking like a dog shit peach seeds. <laughs> you could use it to fight off creeping marauders looking to take your steaks off your grills. I just like being anywhere with Junior, Senior, and Diva. Sounds like a whole other type of movie. <laughs> wow, yeah, really. <laughs> keep it hot, keep it clean, keep it lubricated. We have top men working on it right now. Ooh, top men. And just like that, we are into the second hour, ladies and gentlemen. Strong audience tonight. One week removed, or almost removed, from Thanksgiving. How was your Thanksgiving, everybody? Everybody eat? Everybody overeat? That's right. Oddly enough, that's where I'm about to go for the... Outside the Smoke segment. Not officially named yet, but typically this is the uh, segment of the show where if I'm going to get outside the box, we're going to do it right here before we bring up Chad Ward from Whiskey Bent Barbecue. Again, thanks. If you missed it, you missed Derek Riches from About.com. We talked about Sabre Grill. We talked about the new... This is Brian Mayer. 
host of Hot Sauce Weekly. What? And you are listening to BCRN. Please, Brian, take all over. Barbecue and not, I wasn't talking all about the time. it. Sorry. Thank you, Brian. Okay. Um, we were talking about the new Big Easy, uh, but this is an electric roaster infrared cooker. And we get to talk about that last grill. Hasn't seen Gorilla Grill, although I'm getting a lot of insider information all of a sudden uh, from Gorilla Grill. I've been in touch with Gorilla Grill. So uh, that's kind of like the new hot pellet grill that's on the market. So we'll be talking to uh, one of their particular business people at some point, probably in the next couple of weeks. So if you haven't seen it, go to uh, Barbecue Sauce Reviews. Uh, Jay Prince did a great write-up. He got his hands on one. Uh, very impressive, different design. Uh, so check it out. What can I tell you? Check it out. All right, gang, maybe you haven't heard of this. This is confined. Well, it's happened here in my home state of Ohio, the Buckeye State. Obese third. This is the headline. I swear to God, I'm sure it's made national news. If it hasn't, I'm sure it's just a matter of time. And there's a deeper issue that is underlining this that we're going to have to talk about as it relates to the uh, the barbecue scene, the barbecue industry, the competition barbecue industry. And you're going to see where I'm going to go with this. I want to say up front, I'm not saying, I'm not pointing anybody out in specific. Just saying this as a whole. And if we're all looking at each other and, and ourselves honestly, I think you're going to be able to appreciate what I'm about to say. If not, I'm going to offend you horribly, and I don't mean it. Get that big stuff out of here. Headline, November 28th. At uh, just shy of 10 a.m., here's the headline written by J- uh, Ryan Jaslo. Obese third grader taken from family. Did state go too far? What? I said the third grader was taken from his family. Childhood obesity in the spotlight as a 200-pound a 200-pound third grader from Ohio has been taken from his family and placed into foster care. A county spokeswoman cited medical neglect for the reason the eight-year-old was removed from his Cleveland home. Oh, my God. He's right here. He's probably right down the street from me. Social workers worked with the boy's mother for a year before asking the court for custody of the child. The Plain Dealer, that's my local paper here, the big uh, the big Plain Dealer, heart of the city. Social workers said the boy's mom wasn't doing enough to control his weight, putting him at an increased risk for diseases such as the sugar, better known as diabetes, and hypertension. Lawyers for the mother argue that the county overreacted in taking her son, saying the kid's health is not in eminent danger. The lawyer said they've seen children left in homes with abusive parents and drug addicts. But this boy has a normal childhood, participated in school activities, and was on his elementary school honor roll. They're trying to make it seem like I am an unfit parent and I don't love my child, the boy's mother said, who did not wish to be identified. She told the plain deal, of course I love him. Of course I want him to lose weight. It's a lifestyle change. They're trying to make it seem like I am not embracing that. It's very hard, but I am trying. What do the obesity experts have to say? Temporarily putting an obese child in foster care is uh, is making more sense than alternative options like obesity surgery, according to Dr. David Ludwig, an obesity specialist at the Children's Hospital in Boston. Ludwig, who is not commenting on this particular case, raised the issue in a commentary published last July in the Journal of American Medical Association. That's JAMA and the CBS News, uh, in which it was reported. While these kids might not be in imminent danger, Ludwig said, children with obese-related conditions like diabetes and breathing difficulties and liver problems could die by the age of 30 if no action is taken. Ludwig's paper set off a media firestorm forcing him to defend his paper. It's absolutely understandable that if someone with an obese child heard that the government could take their child away that they would be outraged. I want to emphasize that foster care should be the last resort when all other options have failed. Now, other experts have expressed doubts about the wisdom of taking the kids away from their family. A 218-pound 8-year-old is a time bomb, Dr. Arthur Kaplan said, a professor of bioethics at the University of Pennsylvania, in which he was talking to the plain dealer. But the government cannot raise these children. A third of kids are fat. Fat! We aren't going to move them all to foster care. We can't afford it, and I'm not going – I'm not sure if foster parents are going to do a better job. All right, so I'll ask you what the last sentence of of this paper says. What do you think? Should obese kids be taken away from their families? 
Now look, I think if you look around the collective barbecue and should kids be taken away from their parents, not being abused? Look, I mean, a 300, I have a daughter in third grade. She's active. We try and eat right. We try. It's not the most healthy house. We're busy. We cut corners every once in a while. We try and provide the best options that we can. She's in third grade. I don't even think she's sniffing 100 pounds, let alone 300 pounds. That's a problem. Get that big stuff out of here. A kid in third grade who almost doubles my weight, that's a problem that somebody might want to address. Take Is taking the kid away the best thing? I don't know. I don't really know if that's the best thing ever. But a 300-pound three-year-old is not a healthy three-year-old. It's not a three-year-old that is uh, – uh, sorry, not a third grader. It's not a healthy third grader. It's not a third grader that is feeling well about themselves. It's probably being teased unmercifully. It's probably being caused uh, irreparable emotional distress. Look, kids in the third grade aren't the nicest when they see fat kids ah. rolling around let alone somebody who is heavier than the majority of the uh, overweight male and female population at 300 pounds. Here's what I want to say. If we look around the barbecue and grilling community as a whole, and if you're taking stock and you're being honest, a lot of you guys are fat. What are you doing about it? We are uh, overweight. We don't eat right. We eat in excess. We don't choose the healthy option. We are lazy when it comes to proper eating habits. And more importantly than all of that, we're not exercising. I realize I am skinny for the most part. I'm probably out of the ordinary. I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of competitions cook. I've seen a lot of people just within the industry. Sorry, fat. fat. You are. So let's make the change together. Let's do it together. I am not, uh, as my wife would say, a healthy, skinny person. I have heart disease in my family. Am I stressing my heart 35, 40 minutes a day like I should? I'm not. Am I eating uh, absolutely spectacularly every day of the week and twice on Sunday? I'm not. But I'm going to make a commitment. And I want you to make a commitment to me as well. Let's count our calories for the next seven days and see where we're at. Eat like normal. Eat like the fat people that we are, the unhealthy people that we are, and see where we're at at the end of seven days, how many total calories we have. Then we'll divide that by seven. We'll get our daily average of calories. And then here's what we're going to do. We're going to commit this to this guy. We're going to do commit this guy. I don't need to lose weight, but I need to get in better shape. We're going to cut the calories by 20%. No, nay, 15%. And then we're going to add walking. We're going to add exercise. We're going to start shedding pounds. We're going to be healthier as society. All the men, I want you to join with me. Look at this. Look at this. I have a beard growing. Beards for barbecue. Women, if you want to grow a beard too, beards for barbecue. We are going to be healthier. I'm starting tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. I'm going to pop my Jobies. I'm going to get my skinny, unhealthy ass onto the treadmill. And I'm going to start. And I want you to start with me. And I want you to send pictures. I want you to tell me testimonies. We're going to support each other because I don't want us to be taken away from our families because we're a bunch of big fat asses and unhealthy people. And we're not doing anything about it. Third graders are being taken out of their home because they're 300 pounds and they're fat. Fat. I'm not okay with that. I don't want to lose you guys to diabetes and heart attacks and hypertensions and strokes. Let's follow the plan over the next seven days and see what happens. I want to hear your success stories because I'm going to do it with you. It's going to be awesome. Beards for barbecue. Grow your beard. Send me pictures of your beard. 300 pound third grader that's a big boy now all right gang uh we talk about buying stuff on the internet yesterday was cyber monday did you feel confident about your purchases if you did i hope you did did you go to fred's music and barbecue fred's music and tasty licks barbecue supply and save no you're getting great prices no you're gonna get excellent customer service after the fact look you could have probably saw seven or 20 or 300 great, wonderful prices all over the cyberwebs yesterday. How many people got screwed? Guess what? You're not getting screwed. 
when you're dealing with Fred's Music and Tasty Licks Barbecue Supply Company. That's right. Fred has everything that he sells that you see available on the web in the store. It is all inventoried. It will all ship to you promptly, accurately, and at a great competitive price. Shop around. If you see something better somewhere else, call Fred. See if he's willing to negotiate. I'm sure Fred is interested in gaining your business, especially if you told him you heard it here on the show. Now, aside from all of the uh, grills that he has and the cookbooks and the wood chunks, the special pizza flour and pizza ovens, all that stuff that he can offer you on the cooking side, Fred also has a very successful lines of rubs. His rubs are some of the best that are out there on the market right now. The original guitar player's barbecue rub is great. He's got a spectacular poultry rub that is great just for this time of the season or if you're going to be cooking poultry whenever. But the uh, savory Senor Bernardo poultry rub is spectacular. Also, uh, the one that I love on the vegetables called Veggie Blend. Tree Hugger Blend, I think is what it's called. It's got a little koala hugging a tree. So a little cute while pinching little cheeks. Spectacular on asparagus, corn, beans, you name it. It's a great all-purpose to go right on top. It's got a little garlic kick to it, which I appreciate and adore. Also, he's got the uh, guitar player secret sauce. It's sweet. It's tangy. It's doing well in backyards. Also, if you're interested, doing well on the competition scene because it's using the same spice block from the original guitar player Smoke and Rub. Use them together. You maintain that consistent flavor profile that's going to win in the backyards and in your neighborhoods. Also, it's going to get you great scores on the competition circuit. Fred's Music, Tasty Licks Barbecue Supply. That's tastylicksbbq.com or Fred's Music and the bbq.com. We're going to step away, and when we come back, we're going to get it on with the pitmaster of Whiskey Bend Barbecue and host of Whiskey Bend Barbecue in the Pit, Chad Ward. He'll be coming up right after this. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show right here on the Barbecue Central Radio Network. Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue, it's the Barbecue Central Show. past the hour. Welcome back. 877-448-0433. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. If you want to jump in on the show, let's go ahead and race over the hotline. It's a friend of the show. He's pit master of Whiskey Bend Barbecue, host of Whiskey Bend Barbecue in the pit. Chad Ward joins us here on the show. And a prize bitch at that. Chad, what's up, buddy? Hey, buddy. Good to hear from you, Greg. How you doing tonight? I'm doing absolutely fantastic. Uh, Chad, always appreciate you making time for the show. And I got to admit, Chad, I have a little mixed feelings uh, about you winning the Luft Light. Are you excited about it? Are you pumped up? Do you have something you can actually use it with or what? Yes, I will definitely be using it on the Weber Rancher Kettle. What? Rancher Kettle? You have like the the uh, Planet Jupiter uh, Kettle Ranch, huh? Yes, I love to brag about that when I bought it for three hundred dollars, <laughs> and the guy had only cooked on it six times. Wow! So uh, basically, brand new. I mean, now for the people who don't know, the ranch kettle easily sells for a thousand dollars or more uh, on any type of retail location, whether it be a brick and mortar. You find it online. Now, when you're using it, Chad, and we're completely uh, diverging from what I wanted to talk about originally. But that's right; we got time. Do you fire that up like whole? I mean, imagine that thing would have to take upwards of 50 pounds to get that thing rocking and rolling all the way around. No, I uh, I usually cook on it with about a chimney of lump and a, and, and a couple of pieces of wood. Then uh, does that get the whole thing going? You're just cooking on like little areas of the grill. No, I mean, that, that'll cook for four to six people. I, I've cooked I've cooked about fifty burgers on there at once, and it took around eight pounds a lump. Hmm. So well worth the three hundred bucks, right? Oh yes. 
Chad Ward joining us here on the show. Uh, host of Whiskey Bend Barbecue in the Pit Radio Show website, whiskeybendbbq.com. You can follow him on Twitter at whiskeybendbbq. Uh, also on Facebook as well, so go ahead and fan their page if you are a Facebook person. All right, so uh, KCBS kind of dormant right now. No contest this past weekend, but you guys uh, took part in the Plant City Pig Jam, uh, now a week removed. You've had some time away from it and the contest itself. You know, as you're able to look over it now uh, because you've had some time away, how does the cook go for you overall? Are you satisfied with the overall experience? Anything out of the ordinary that you had to contend with? What are some of your summatory thoughts? Yeah, so we've been very fortunate to ha- have some, uh, uh, you know, some very good cooks. Uh, hey, Chad, hold on one second. Do you want me to, I think you're feeding back to yourself. You want me to try and call you back and see if that fixes something? Hold on one second. All right. Let me see. You're not listening to the show at the same time that you're talking, are you? No, I shouldn't be. Hold on a second. You there? I'm here. Is that any better? I think so. Yeah, well. Is it better for you? You must say. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, go, going back to Plant City, we've had some really good cooks on – ribs lately so we felt pretty good about that one going in our chicken had been something that we had been cooking really well up until about six months ago and we had just i don't don't know what happened i mean we didn't think we got too far from things or anything like that but uh actually jared hatcher my teammate he said hey just give me this chicken let me work on it so jared kind of worked on the the chicken a little bit as far as prep goes and this and that and took a couple of uh, steps we hadn't been taking lately and then uh you know we, we we thought pork and brisket would be where they needed to be but you know when we get into the results phase that uh, we'll find out we we're a little bit wrong there all right so let's go ahead and uh, look over the results if you don't mind uh, we will take a category no. by category this is a kcbs event obviously uh chicken always called first were they calling out uh, top five in each category uh, they, they were calling out top 10 i believe we had around 44 teams and it's it's always a fun contest for us because there's a, a good mixture of FBA teams, but also uh, uh, KCBS teams that have traveled a bit. And we'll obviously talk about them, I'm sure, here a little bit later. But IAB30, uh, Tom and those guys, we cooked next to them at Ve- in, in Las Vegas this year at Ronnie Kate's event. And we had a little bit of relationship with those guys, so it was cool to see them, and it was cool to see to – see some of the other KCBS teams, but in spite of being long winded, getting back to your question, yes, they they called ten. All right, so uh, ten over, or, well, ten for the categories, and they called top ten overall as well. Yes. All right, so let's take chicken. Uh, I imagine that as you're leading off, it's always nice to hear your name get called uh, within that first top ten for this category to kind of build momentum, kind of reiterate and reconfirm that what you're doing on chicken is at least working. So you get a top five call. Did it taste like top five chicken or perhaps I should uh, pull back a little bit? This seems to be kind of 50-50 with Pitmasters. Do you taste your products before you turn them in, Chad? A- absolutely. We, we taste everything before it goes in the box. And it, 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 we did think it was good chicken, and we were kind of happy because, like I said, we've struggled on that the last five or six months. And we kind of tasted it. Jared and I looked at each other, and you know, we were like, "All right, this is good." We, you know, Jared spent a lot of time in the prep, and also uh, decided to add one a little bit of one spice we hadn't been running uh, lately, and and kind of brought it up to me after we had put it on the cooker. Like, hey, I, I did add this in if you don't mind. And I was like, okay, I, I think that'll complement it well. And the other thing we did after talking to, to Bubba Latimer and a couple other uh, friends in barbecue, we quit cooking as many pieces of chicken as we've been cooking. Mm-hmm. We cooked about, about 14 to 16 pieces and really focused on them. And, and we were very happy to hear fifth place called. How many pieces of chicken were you cooking prior to that, Chad? We were cooking probably close to twenty four to thirty. Oh wow! So I mean, was it just like a thing where you're just throwing them on all? Uh, you're throwing them on there, and you're just like, well, we can pull six or eight off out of the thirty, and they'll be all right. Right, and, and that was the thing where I think we were going really wrong. Greg was we on, on these racks that we cook on, we could easily fit twenty four to thirty. So we just said, well, they fit on the rack, you know, blah blah blah. Let's just let's just cook this many. 
And that I think we were all wrong in that when I sat down and talked to Bubba. Bubba kind of explained his method to his madness, you know, to me. And I said, you know what? You're right. Because in all of our pits, whether we want to admit it or not, there's a hot spot here and a hot spot there. Mm -hmm. And what Bubba convinced me of is if you're cooking that much chicken, you're not cooking them uniformly. So why don't you pick something that'll be in your hot spot, something that can be in your cold spot, whatever it may be, and cook enough chicken to cover that. And that's why we went to 14 to 16 pieces. All right, so you get that top five call uh, for chicken. Feeling good about that? Uh, good way to, to start the competition at that point then? Yes. we we, we Jared and I had – made an agreement that if we got called in chicken and ribs, we thought we could really do something uh, that day because we, we felt really good about pork and brisket. Uh, so, yeah, so we're, we're feeling great. We're high five and we're, you know, all, all around feeling good about the contest so far. All right. So certainly nothing is going to be stymied as you roll into ribs uh, better than five. You get top three overall in ribs. Did the ribs taste like top three effort? Did you think they were better? You think they were worse? Where did they weigh out for you? They, they, they tasted good, and, and here's one of the reasons I would always tell the listeners to, to taste your product before you turn it in. We we thought ribs may have been just a little bit flat. So we did a couple of things that you can do before you put them in the turn-in box, and we felt like when we tasted them that that, that really helped kind of br- bring out the flavors we were looking for. So we liked the ribs that we turned in. We thought they were good. And uh, to, to get the top three call there, we were really excited because, you know, that we expected them to be somewhere in the top ten. But uh, to go top three was, was really cool. All right, so with two calls and, you know, five is now the worst, three is the best, you have to be feeling like this is really starting to build. Uh, you go to pork, no call. Uh, you end up getting 23rd overall. Uh, where, yeah. did the, where did the pork weigh out for you? Did you think you got the shaft? Uh, you get jobbed by the judges, or was pork not there right now? No, we pork's been a good category for us the last year. We we made some pretty big wholesale changes because last year it dragged for us, and and we did a lot of test cooks, and and we and, I, and our pork's been right lately. Uh, it was really it, it kind of came down to me. It was my fault. Um, I kind of over injected the money muscle. And we, we gelled up a little bit and it was, it was totally my fault. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have went that heavy. Um, and we ended up going off 23rd. I mean, we did everything we could to, to kind of get the gel out of there. We really glazed them. Well, we, uh, we did a couple of things we do always before we put them in the box to kind of make it pop. And, uh, I didn't think it was 23rd when we didn't get a call. I thought we were top 15. Uh, so 23rd kind of stung a little bit and, but you know, what, what are you going to do? Uh, I mean, so are you able to make that determination after you see where you're finishing up that you did uh, over-inject the money muscle? Or are you just speculating at that point? Do you get feedback specifically on uh, over-injected money no. muscle? No, I, I di- we, di- we didn't get the feedback, but we did. Uh, obviously, when we cut the money muscle to put it in the box, we noticed it. Okay. And, you know, we, we did what we could to, to uh, I'd say, minimize it. But then at that point, I got to thinking that, you know, if, if we're seeing that, you know, if we're seeing that, then, you know, we may, we may have a little bit more of an issue. And I, and I think we were just – we did get one comment card that – and it's always kind of funny – tasted too porky. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was pretty cool. Yeah, heaven forbid your pork tastes like pork. Right. And, and that was always – but before this year, that was always our thing is we thought our pork tasted bland – and pork was just a big sauce contest. So we finally get flavor into our pork, and it's too porky. <laughs> Chad Ward joining us here on the show, Whiskey Ben Barbecue's Pitmaster. Uh, you can find them on the wet, uh, web, whiskeybenbbq.com, Twitter, at whiskeybenbbq. You can also uh, friend them on Facebook. Uh, last category, brisket. Again, no top 10 call overall. You get, I mean, consistency, consistency. You end up 23rd <laughs> on uh, brisket as you did on pork. Uh, thoughts about your brisket, where that came out? Is that a 23rd brisket? Did you think you got jobbed, or where are you at? Man, brisket's been a real SOB the last three contests for us, Greg. Uh, and actually, we're on internet radio. It's been a real son of a bitch the last three contests. <laughs> it's been um, some it's that, that uh, brisket's been some bullshit out there. 
and, 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 and not from the judges. It, 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 it falls it falls directly on me. Jared's done all his part to make sure brisket's trimmed, ready to go, looking like it should. And and for some reason, I've just been running them a little bit dry. And I don't know if it's because I'm, I'm cooking a little bit of a different cut or what it is, but uh, brisket at best of the best probably cost us, you know, thousand two thousand wow. dollars uh because at the, the invitational and the open they just sucked and I, I i turned around and did it again in plant city and it probably cost us a, a top five overall call but uh to to you know to defend myself since then i've, I've cooked two briskets a week uh i think i think i've got it figured out but uh ju- just a little bit disappointing and when when i you know once as a cook you got to be honest with yourself and once they got to about sixth and we hadn't heard our name, I knew it wasn't a top five brisket. So then, so then we just kind of start playing out in our minds, how bad was it? Was it 44th? Was it 11th? Or was it somewhere in between? All right, so uh, you go through the category calls. Now they start calling. over. You get seventh overall, so certainly – Top 10, always a good result. But when you have two top five calls, and you started out with two top five calls, uh, one, yeah. one being a third, and then no calls for the other two categories, and obviously you kind of made mention that at that point you were kind of thinking, you know, where were we on pork? Where were we on brisket? After the first two, you thinking reserve grand or, or maybe grand champion, and where does the mind wander? And at what point uh, with the last two categories that you know, are we going to be top 10? Did it tank all over the place or where are we at? Well, to be honest, after the first two calls, we thought we had a run at it. Uh, IAB 30 had done, uh, got, ended up getting four calls, but after two calls, we knew we were neck and neck with them. And uh, we knew another team, a new up-and-coming team out of Florida called Fat Ashes. We knew at that time they had one call. Uh, and, and that kind of gets to your earlier rant, Greg. Fat Ashes, Fat Asses, kind of whole deal. Right. But when, when Pork missed, we thought Pork could be in that top 25. Or top 15, I'm sorry. And so we were kind of like, okay, we're, we're not that far off the beaten path. And so then... We thought maybe if brisket catches the right table, we, we, can, we can maybe get a, 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 a late call, if you will, at 8, 9, or 10. When we didn't get that, I automatically started thinking we were somewhere between 5 and 10 uh, uh, overall. And uh, obviously that's where we ended up finishing because at that point, after you called brisket, you knew IAB 30 had four calls. So they were going to be towards the top. And you knew Fat Ashes had three calls and two of them were big. So at that, at that point in time, it was kind of, what are you going to do? And then you have a guy like Rob Bagby sneaking at fourth with <laughs> one call, right. but three other categories that were close. So uh, let's be honest here, Chad. Don't lie like I know you want to. <laughs> Is it a disappointment for you, uh, you know, for both uh, personally as a team, you know, collective team that was cooking to get the seventh overall and, and kind of tanking off on the last two categories, or are you happy to take the results that you got and you're just going to press forward from here? It was, it was disappointing. Yes, Greg, because we, we get so few KCBS contests down in our area. So it, it was disappointing to a degree, but at the end of the day, you know, you, you can't be upset with going seventh out of that field. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say up until you kind of get the judges' scorecards and you kind of start to go through them, you're pretty upset, like, damn, you know, we really blew a, a two good calls. But then on the ride home, you're like, well, shit, out of this crew, it's not that bad a deal. Now, you do cook KCBS. You do cook FBA. Uh, it's probably not too much of a, a venture or a stretch for me to say that you're probably more of an FBA bleeder than KCBS. But you do cook both. Different rules for different governing bodies. Do you find it at all hard to maintain any type of consistency when you're flopping around sanctioning bodies like that? Uh, not, not really. Actually, we've um, we've warmed up a lot to KCBS. Uh, we like the 30 minute turn in turn in windows, the parsley boxes. Now that our good friend Diva Q has taught us a way to make them quick, fast, and and in a hurry. What? We're we're happy about those and. And and actually, believe it or not, Greg, we cooked more KCBS contests this year than we did FBAs. Uh-oh. Do you like that? 
Uh, in, in a, and, and I don't want this to come off the wrong way. <laughs> yes, we do, because we love our FBA brothers. I mean, it's where we started. We'll always call ourselves FBA cooks. But with, with KCBS being, you know, across the country, we get to go out and cook contests outside of our area. We meet new teams. We need meet new people. And, and that's a lot of the fun of it. Um, so, you know, I, I think you'll see a lot more of that out of us. I think they'll always be the six to eight to ten core FBA contests that we'll cook. But I think we'll always be trying to cross states off the list. I mean, we're fortunate in, in two years professionally to – to have cooked in 10 different states. Absolutely. Chad Ward joining us here on the show. Again, the website, whiskeybendbbq.com. You can follow him on Twitter, at whiskeybendbbq. And if you're on Facebook, you can uh, find them through the search. Uh, just search Whiskey Bend Barbecue. You can go ahead and uh, fan up their uh, fan page as well. Chad, I'm going to go ahead and uh, duck you on hold here just for a few seconds while I go ahead and remind everybody about my guy Dave Bosco from Butcher BBQ. If you watched the live feed of the show last week, you might have found some things that you found highly disturbing. Like the fact that your host was sucking down Dave's sweet barbecue sauce like it was Maker's Mark bourbon on ice. I understand. Dave is a sponsor of the show. I understand that listening through uh, Chris Grove's talk about when when you're getting things sent to you and evaluating full disclosure, look... Dave sponsors the show. Obviously, I've been uh, doing live reads for him now for the last uh, three months or so. I'm not going to lie to you, the consuming public, if a sauce doesn't meet my particular palate requirements. Now, what do I always say? My palate might be different than yours. What I like, what I enjoy might not be the same for you. So while you may take into evaluation my review of a sauce, my review of a rub, Don't let that necessarily prohibit you from buying something or trying it on your own. And then if you like it, you can always email me back or call me on the show or call me off hours or find me on the Barbecue Central Radio Network's forum and say, hey, you're wrong. This stuff is uh, is fantastic. I'm happy to have somebody uh, contend my opinion. But here's what I can say with absolute 100% assurity. If you go to ButcherBBQ.com, not only are you going to find the mainstay beef injection, the mainstay pork injection, that fantabulous grill product that is sweeping and taking over the barbecue and grilling nation. You're going to be able to buy Dave's Sweet Barbecue Sauce and, quite frankly, some of the best-tasting sauce that I have had that's now commercially made available. It's gone. Well, first of all, he sent me two bottles. One bottle is gone now, and it hasn't even been a week. I use it on pulled pork. I use it on pork tenderloin. I use it on chicken. I also put a little bit of, of uh, on, on some pot roast when I made it the other night. Quite frankly, some of the most versatile sauce, but it's not overly sweet. What do I hate more than anything else besides uh, liquid smoke? It's something that is way the top overly sweet. Sweet, yes. Overly sweet, no. And works well with a number of different canvases of protein. So be confident knowing that your host likes it and that I'm encouraging you to butcherbbq.com and picking yourself up one or 15 bottles of this sauce. Help, my family loved it. That, my friends, is a true testament. If the three daughters are eating it and the wife is eating it and I'm eating it, it's a good all-around flavor profile that a number of people can enjoy on a number of different protein canvases. Butcherbbq.com. Get the sauce. Highly recommended for this uh, Christmas season, holiday season. We'll pick it up with Chad Ward here in just 10 seconds. Stand by. Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue. It's the Barbecue Central Show. Right, coming up on 35 past the hour, 25 minutes till the top of the hour, 877-448-0433, Greg at the BBQCentralShow.com. Chad Ward joining us here on the show. Chad, so let's talk about scores in general, whether it be KCBS, whether it be FBA. If you see a category start to fall off a bit, at what point do you start to make changes? And for you and the team, are they wholesale changes? Are they minor tweaks? How do you go about that whole process? It really depends on more of, of what we tasted. 
we will obviously take the judge's recommendations into account, but we really don't make wholesale changes unless a category has been just kind of failing, like Pork did us last year. And so we, we did make some pretty big changes coming into this year, and, and they paid off. But something like brisket where we've had, you know, continued success, we've had a couple of contests where we could taste the difference. We're just going to make some small, subtle changes to, to get that back on the right path. Now, Whiskey Ben isn't a, a veteran team by any stretch of the imagination, but you're not the young punks on the block anymore. What are some of the biggest things as a team that you've learned on the circuit that perhaps you didn't even think would be something you would have to contend with? Uh, quit bringing kegs to every contest. That was probably our biggest. We, we, bullshit. That's the best idea ever. (laughs) (laughs) And, and, and we did, I mean, for, for three years, I mean, every contest we, we brought a keg to, and and we started to realize we could have just as much fun on a Friday night without all of that. Uh, I mean, we still drink, have a good time. Don't get me wrong. But what we learned was a couple of things. One is listen. Uh, we're pretty fortunate having a more recognized team that a lot of judges will come by, you know, before or usually after, you know, after judging and, you know, you can talk and you can interact and, you know, take away the tidbits from there. You can also talk to a lot of fellow competitors, you know, they'll, you know, obviously, you know, talk to you about some of the things they're trying, some of the things they're doing. So one thing is really just to listen more than you transmit, which for a guy like me is kind of hard. Now, I've always wondered about this because you have some of those teams that are out there, they're doing 25, 35, 40 competitions a year, and then you have some other guys that are just showing up, maybe they're going to do it, maybe this is the only contest they're going to cook during the course of the year, maybe they're only doing a couple, they're guys that are bringing the kegs. Do do you find a delineation now that you're kind of paying uh, closer attention to the teams and what they are doing in your doing your own recognizance with some of the top teams as you're being able to, to kind of talk to them prior to getting down to competition? Do you see the top teams that are always in an upper echelon of KCBS and FBA? Are these teams really not partying? Do you not see them partaking in a lot of adult beverages during the course of the evening? Is it always game time for them? No, I mean, I think if you take a, take a look at some of the the top teams, you know, especially in the FBA, uh, let's just let's just run off a couple. Uh, Dana uh, Dana Hillis from Big Papa's Country Kitchen, he he had a great October cooked in, you know, Sam's Club Regional, Sam's Club National, the Royal, the Jack. D- Dana will always be out there at twelve one o'clock in the morning, and he'll have a beer with you. Um, good guy. We still have a lot of fun down here. Uh, Rub Bagby, which everybody knows, Swamp Boys Barbecue. R- Rub's always out and apparent on a Friday night, and he'll have fun with you. Uh, Terry McKay, get her smoked. He'll win Team of the Year this year in FBA. You know, he'll he'll be out there and have a good time with you. And we all, I, I think it's where you take that line from having a good time to just being stupid. And I think that's the line that that kind of the, the guys that that make better results. That's the one they can draw is everybody goes out there, they have a good time, they have a couple of adult cocktails, but you, you don't get to that point where you wake up an hour and a half late, two hours late to to put on ribs. How quick is it to, to go over that line? Uh, it depends. I mean, if, if you're in the Whiskey Bent camp and <laughs> and we're pouring back uh, shots of Palm Ridge Reserve, proud sponsor of Whiskey Bent Barbecue. Hello. The only the only micro-distilled whiskey in the state of Florida. Well placed. You could probably, cro- yeah, you, you, you could probably cross that line pretty quick. Um, but, but, but I, I think it's all just in, you know, kind of knowing yourself and, and knowing where you need to be. And when you got to say, all right, boys, that's enough. We'll, uh, we'll continue this at, at two o'clock tomorrow after brisket turn in. Chad, have you seen any big changes in flavor profiles and types of injections or techniques over the past two years that you have implemented now that you weren't using when you initially started out? Uh, not big ones. I, I would say I've, uh, Obviously, not, not not to conflict with the show. We're we're big Cosmos Q guys, and I would say I'm actually probably injecting a little bit less than, than I used to in the past. I mean, still inject, still get the flavor down in there, but but really cognizant of the too beefy or too porky uh, type of comments. And you know, I, I would say there's there's not a lot of wholesale changes that, that that we've seen in the last year or two. 
I would say that I think there's a a lean back towards more smokier food uh, down here in the last three to six months, and and you're seeing some guys change styles based on that. Do you welcome the the change in flavor profile? Or seems to have been kind of a stymie in creativity when it comes to profiles over the last maybe two three years. Are, do you foresee or are you forecasting? Uh, perhaps an even bigger, more wide-sweeping change in flavor profiles over the next year or so? I, I, I think the judges continue to challenge us, us cooks to layer flavors. And whether that be layering flavors of smoke or depth of smoke, and then you know rub and sauce flavors on top of that, uh, I, I see the judges making us get a little more complex than cooking something on a pellet cooker for 12 hours and slathering it with blue zog. Um, I, I think they're challenging us a little bit more now than 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 that. All right, one last question here, Chad, before we flip topics. You know, I've talked to a number of pit masters over the years. The vast percentage of these cooks have said that how they would cook their competition barbecue is completely different than what they would serve for their family and friends when it comes to the same uh, proteins of barbecue. If you're thinking about getting into the circuit, would you say it would be just wise to wholesale abandon the thoughts of your backyard barbecue and how you're making it when you're thinking about making that leap into the circuit in order to be successful? Yes, I, I think I, I cook a lot of the food the same for family or friends. I don't season them even close to the same. It is... It, it is a lot less sweet at home, and it's a little more spicy. And I would say if you're going to really take a shot at going into competition cooking, take a class as soon as you can because you need to taste those flavor profiles. Chad Ward joining us here on the show. He is uh, the pit master of Whiskey Bent Barbecue. And, of course, we're going to transition now into host of Whiskey Bent Barbecue in the Pit, which can be currently found on Blog Talk Radio. It's a terrible house, by the way. Uh, perhaps soon transitioning over to the Outdoor Cooking Channel, but that's a different story for a different day. Tuesday night, 7 p.m., so Chad is on uh, for a full two hours before this show. Chad, tell us about the show, what kind of content you're looking to bring to your audience every week. We're, we're really trying to, I mean, you know, you know, Greg, I mean, obviously, thanks to you. I mean, you're the guy that kind of pioneered barbecue radio. And what we're trying to do is just have an audience that we're trying to, to, to bring in the backyard smoker and griller, but also the competition barbecue, barbecue and griller and, and teach them a little bit of uh, about both sides of it, whether it's in the backyard or whether it's on the competition circuit. And we've been pretty fortunate to have some some decent guests. Um that, that, that have had some pretty good years and it's really about that just bringing people together and talking a little bit about not only competition barbecue but things people can try in the backyard also now i know when you know people ask me how do i get into it uh what was my motivation i have a barbecue form which is uh, like a bbqcentral.com so you can just go and it's like a post like uh barbecue brethren or i don't want to say it's like barbecue form because that thing's a nightmare but similar in ideas so you're posting you're getting people's responses you're talking about barbecue so in order to set the forum apart i decided to do podcasting which has now kind of morphed into the live show that we're going to be doing for almost four years in february now i mean what's your what was your impetus what was your motivating or precipitating event to get you into thinking about doing a show i had never ever thought about it until daryl mast uh, barbecue superstars came up to me at the Orlando KCBS contest and said, Hey man, I, I really, it's, it's hard to do four nights of, of radio. Uh, would you want to take a night? And before I thought about it, I said, yes, cause I'm, I'm there and I'm at, I'm at a competition. I'm kind of in the spirit. I'm like, sure. Why not? <laughs> and next thing you know, we're, you know, we're riding back after that contest and I'm going, how am I going to come up with 60 to 90 minutes of content every week? <laughs> So it it was really just dumb luck of falling into it, and uh, and 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 so you know that's how it kind of all got started. And I said, well, you know, if I was a barbecue cook, what's the what's the things that I would like to hear? And I and obviously I took a a lot of the ideas from you know I mean, and, and you know before I started my show, I think I've listened to every one of your podcasts because I travel a lot for work, and and it gave me a lot of good ideas of, of what's beneficial information. Chad Ward joining us here on the show, host of Whiskey Bent Barbecue in the Pit. Uh, Chad, what do you like best about doing the show? 
I like being able to, you know, I take somebody like Mike Richter from Chick Swine and Bovine. You know, that, that, that's, that's some, that's a team that people read about every week on the KCBS website right. or on Facebook or whatever. I like being able to bring a guy like that on and let him explain how he got started. What, what all the factors are behind what brought him to barbecue. That's probably what I get the most out from it is, is really, I'm trying to be the Roy Firestone of barbecue, Greg. I mean, I haven't got anybody to cry yet though. But but I think it's cool to give kind of a behind the scenes look at these guys that we always see, you know, in, in the heat of battle, if you will. What do you like least about doing the show? Probably show prep. <laughs> I mean, if, if you want, if what's you want that? To do a decent, yeah, I mean, I mean, you know how it is. I mean, if you want to do a decent one, you need to pour in four to eight hours a week of of just prepping, making sure you're up on topics. Uh, because because the other thing besides the canned stuff that we, we both do and prepare for every week is, you know, if, if you have some dead time and you open up the caller, you know, you, you don't want to sound ignorant about maybe a pressing topic out there. Best interview that you've done so far. I mean, I know you're, you know, a couple months in, but there's got to be one that you can Im- immediately point to right now that may- – I've done it like a billion times where, you know, and let's face it, a lot of times you can't get to talk to somebody prior to getting them up on the air. So right. you, it's kind of a leap of faith. You can usually tell them about the first five to 10 seconds of an interview with somebody you've never talked to, if it's going to suck, if it's going to be okay and serviceable, or if it's going to be like, wow, I hit a home run. And, and that happens very quickly for hosts because you're evaluating passion. You're evaluating how excited they're talking about it. Who's jumping out to you as top one or two interviews you've done so far? Well, I'm going to call two. And the first one is Ronnie Cates. Uh, I think it's cool because, you know, Ronnie and I have always been pretty good friends from a competition point of view. But to have him come on the air and, you know, announce the USA Barbecue Championships and those type of things, that was that was really cool. And, and I like Ronnie. I like what Ronnie's done for competition barbecue. And I – I think we'll only continue to grow that. Uh, that would be my number two. My number one by far is Mike Richter. Um, I like Mike a lot as a person. Um, I think Mike's just a great guy. And to be able to have him on the show for an hour and a half, just kind of exposing what Chick Swine and Bovine is, was uh, – was, was, I, I found that was the only interview, Greg, where I found myself being more of a listener than a host. Funny how that happens. And, uh, yeah, yeah, and I, and I think that's just because the guy is so genuine and has so much to share with people. All right, so if you could book anyone on the show, anyone at all, uh, you don't have to jump through PR hacks uh, or anything like that, who would you like to land and why? I'd probably like to land Bobby Flay just to expose him as not being that good of a griller. <laughs> Tough words, buddy. Yeah. Um, I, uh, that'd be tough. I mean... You know, obviously, you know, you see, you've had a lot of the good guys on. I mean, you, you have Myron on all the time and, and Myron's just, I mean, you, you work with him so well. He's such a good guest. Um, you know, My, Myron's obviously a guy you'd love to, to sit down and talk to, but, but, you know, cooking with him in the FBA down here. I mean, I've had chances to sit next to him and have a drink and, and talk to him and what a great guy, but I would say I would probably go after more of the the visible folks. I mean, I'd like to talk to, to Bobby Flay and probably Guy Fietti. That'd probably be the two. Chad Ward joining us here on the show. He's pitmaster of Whiskey Bent Barbecue. Again, you can find him at whiskeybentbbq.com. You can also uh, find them on Twitter at whiskeybentbbq and on Facebook as well. Uh, blogtalkradio.com is the website. Just look for in the search. You can find uh, Whiskey Bent Barbecue in the pit. Uh, Chad, before I let you go, uh, sponsors for your team in the show. Give them a roll. All right, so uh, obviously Green Mountain Grills, pellet cookers, they've been with us for a while, very appreciative, um, You know, really enjoy cooking on them, and I, d- I do want to be said about layering flavors, I wasn't taking a pellet cooking shot, uh, we're, we're not changing anytime soon, it's just getting more creative about how you layer those flavors, uh, three, three Eyes Barbecue Rub, uh, Cosmos Q, Texas Pepper Jelly, uh, Great Lakes Barbecue Supply.com. Uh, Magnify Credit Union. Uh, we're starting to sound like a NASCAR team now, but every one of them pays an entry fee. So we're very appreciative. 
And uh, thanks for having us on the show again, Greg. All right, Chad. Uh, certainly appreciate the time. Continued success, and we'll talk to you soon, buddy. Thanks, buddy. All right, there he is, Chad Ward. Whiskey Bent, top-notch guy, ready to lay it out for you. Always appreciate that about the guests. Honesty, not holding back, and being honest. That makes a great guest. So does talking with a little bit of excitement and passion, which Chad does very well. Gang, Draper's Barbecue is a third-generation barbecue company located in western Kentucky in between Memphis and Kansas City. Shane Draper has created a line of products that represent both cities as well as the flavor profiles of his home. Draper's Smoking Sauce is a savory with a touch of sweetness and tangy with some heat. Its balanced yet complex blend of spices is at home on the competition trail and grilling in your backyard. Draper's Barbecue also has a fantastically versatile seasoning known simply as AP Rub. The AP is short for all purpose as it is a great flavor enhancer on any protein, but it can be also used on popcorn, french fries, love it on french fries, salads, onion rings, soups, chowders, Chex Mix, check on Chex Mix, tried that this past weekend, baked potatoes, and in dredges for frying fish and chicken. Your imagination is its only limitation. AP's rub balance of savory, salty, sweet, and heat Make it great on virtually anything. That's why they call it AP, right? Smoke and Sauce and AP Rub are great products when they're used on their own, but they really shine, of course, when used together. The mix of the two products will help keep the judges thinking about your entry long after they've put it down. Not only will the judges keep thinking about it, perhaps your neighbors, your friends, the guests you're catering for, all going back for second, third, and fourth bites. Now, don't miss this opportunity, friends. Claim your limited edition Draper's Barbecue Christmas gift box only available at drapersbbq.com. There's only going to be 75 made. The box will include a large stainless steel shaker, a bottle of smoking sauce, a pound of AP rub, and three recipes handpicked by Shane Draper himself, all included in the beautiful gift box, ready to slap a name tag on and slide under the tree. Check the website out this week for ordering details. I think I'm actually going to be able to show you one on the live video feed next week. Draper's Barbecue Products, the sauce and the rub, not the gift boxes, can be found at drapersbbq.com, bbqaddicts.com, and bbqproshop.com, all trusted resources. Wait a second. Live update. Chain has included a fourth recipe. Draper's Barbecue, always looking for local stores in your area. Email Shane. Info at drapersbbq.com for more info. Your tip could learn you to earning some free swag. And, of course, Draper's Barbecue says three generations of pride and flavor in a bottle because, quite frankly, they mean it. Drapersbbq.com will summarize right after this. Get in the smoke. Call 877-448-0433 to get on the air. Now, here's your host, Greg Rampey. All right, uh, five minutes till the top of the hour. Thanks again to Chad Ward for joining us. Look, you might think I'm just kind of being a funny guy. I'm a funny guy. Um, I really mean it because I've been getting a lot of emails saying, are you really talking about you're going to start a uh, health program and bar- uh, beards for barbecue and all that stuff? Absolutely. I absolutely mean it with every single fiber of my being. Now, you might be watching me on the video feed. You might be thinking I'm coming across sarcastic. That is not the case. I'm the first one to admit that while my frame is slender like a supermodel, I am not heart healthy. I know I'm not. My wife tells me I can simply go back and look at the lineage of my uh, mom and father's family. There's heart attack all over the place. I should be doing more to take care of me because I have three daughters. Look, uh, the fat people could be eating less and exercising more. So again, let's do this together. Seven days, starting tomorrow, count your calories. Every single calorie you put in your mouth, 
count it for the next seven days. At the end of seven days, we will go ahead and divide those calories in total by seven and come up with our average daily caloric intake. Then we'll just section out like 10% or 15%. Maybe as a stretch goal, we'll do 15, but maybe 10, you know, kind of like a, a, a uh, initial goal, but a stretch goal to 15. Maybe some people want to start out there. And then, so immediately you're going to start losing weight. If you're eating 15% less calories than you are on your weekly average otherwise, you're going to start losing weight. Then we'll add in walking. I'm going to start going treadmill. I might actually start doing some P90X. It's not, uh, it's not, it's not a competition. It's to get healthy. It's to maintain proper lifestyle choices and changes when we're at the dinner table to get that exercise, to be good examples for our kids. We don't want to have third graders that are 300 pounds and fat getting taken from our homes. It's happening right here in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city. Don't want it to happen to you. You're not a bad parent. We're busy. I understand. It's a lifestyle. Sometimes you got to make those changes. You got to make those shortcuts, and it's not healthy for everybody. Greg is not quitting barbecue, Patrick. Absolutely not. So do it with me. I'll track my progress. We will help each other. We'll support. We'll be like our own uh, support system. Guys, again, look here. I have the uh, the beard growing. I just shaved my neck in uh, the other day. Beards for barbecue. We're going to get healthy together. Women, if you can grow a beard, grow beards too. Who cares? I don't care. I don't care at all. I think women with beards are hot and sexy. I love it. Get that big stuff out of here. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, no, I don't. One thing that I do want to mention here before we close out really quickly, uh, and this is for the novice to beginner griller. If you've never cleaned out your grill, do me a favor and just do it right now. Because if you're my father-in-law and you've probably never cleaned out the gas grill before, and then Thanksgiving is the day that you decide you're going to bust the grill out to take some of the load off of the oven and you put all of the stuffing on the grill Once it gets hot enough, all of the gunk and shit that is built up in that grill starts to smoke. And quite frankly, it ruins the flavor of the stuffing and almost ruins Thanksgiving. So be sure, if you're going to put that grill away, that you properly clean it, that you're taking all the gunk out, that you're cleaning out the the, uh, grease box, all of that stuff. You don't want white smoke proliferating all over your grill while you're actually cooking in the middle of it. shouldn't be like smoking because you have a bunch of uh, gunked up crap. That's bad grill hygiene. That's not a safe grill. That's not a good call. That's not a very good call. So do me a favor, as I should now be telling my father-in-law, clean your grill out after every use. Maintain proper grill hygiene. But don't have Thanksgiving be the day that you decide that uh, you're going to finally break the grill out and cook stuffing on it and have a nightmare of a stuffing issue. Oh, boy, did that taste bad. Stove top to the rescue, though. Yeah! Yeah! All right, we're going to wrap it up. I want to thank first hour Derek Riches, bbq.about.com, talking mostly about Saber Grill. Also about the Big Easy from Charboil, the new uh, electric infrared smoker roaster. 250 bucks though, so I think I'll pass. Also, thanks to first timer Chris Grove from Nibble Me This. Check his website out, nibblemethis.com. A pleasure to have him on the show tonight. We'll have him back on for sure. Get some of his recipes and thoughts about cooking and uh, all that good stuff. And then thanks to my good buddy Chad Ward. He is the pit master of Whiskey Bent Barbecue. You can also find them on the web, whiskeybentbbq.com, on Twitter at whiskeybentbbq. But believe Nibble Me This is uh, at Nibble Me This, if I'm uh, incorrect. Uh, please correct me, Chris. I'll make that adjustment. And you can find Chad's current radio show from 7 until 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on a Blog Talk Radio Whiskey Bent Barbecue in the Pit. Want to help remind you to control your rusty grill grate population. If you have raw cast iron and you use it, after you're done, clean it off as it starts to cool down because it retains heat like a mother. Pop some Pam on that or burn some Crisco into that as it cools down. It bakes in and reseasons. You're good to go for years to come with rust-free service. Also, September 11, 2001. I will never forget. Big show loaded out already for next week, including Steve Farron from I Smell Smoke, one of the four horsemen running for KCBS. You won't want to miss that. And until then, this is your program host and proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe. Good night now.